message to tell you about something I'm super excited about. So myself, uh, Miss Horning, Miss Jeeves and Mr Whitaker have come together to create uh, a virtual choir because we were really sad that we couldn't get together to perform this summer term. As a music teacher, it's very, very devastating not to be able to perform together with people. So I've got over 40 musicians yeah, yeah, yeah. and singers who are involved in recording the song Rise Up by Andra Day. And this is involving nice pupils who, and staff who are currently at school and also ex-pupils and ex-members of staff, which I'm super happy to have. Uh, this is kind of, you'll hear in the background, but this is what we're kind of working with. And we're gonna have 40 tracks on there, uh, plus. So that's yeah. gonna be fun to edit. But I wanted to tell you about something that you can actually get involved in. So although we've got all the singers and everyone ready, what you can get involved in is this. So what I'm hoping is that people can send in pictures, video clips, anything, the videos have to be soundless though, that you, that you think represent rising up. Maybe something you've done amazing in lockdown or maybe the birth of a baby or birth of a new puppy or something like that. Anything you think that represents rise up. Once you're happy with that, send that to me uh, at my email address by the 21st of June. Anything you can send them will be absolutely fantastic. And thank you for your help. And I can't wait for you all to hear this. Bye. Nah, I'm not good enough. I'm just not good enough. Hello, good morning, and welcome to The Early Show with me, your host, Aidan Stowe. Hey, I'm, I'm glad I got here before that lizard. I mean, did you see him last week? The most pitiful thing is he actually thinks he can sing. I mean, awful. Uh, he gave me this list of songs he wants to do on the show. Just to have a look at this. God's Plan by Drake. He wants to sing this. Someone You Loved, Lewis Capaldi. Don't Call Me Up, Mabel. And Freaky Friday, Lily Dicky featuring Chris Brown. I mean, I've never heard of any of these. And then he wants to put on a live production of Blood Brothers. Morning, all. Oh, you are here. Where have you been? Hey, I'm going to join the choir, I reckon. Can you put the word in with Miss Johnson? I know they're doing a show on that and it'll be my dream to be in it, but I dare not ask. Yeah, if you like. I've recorded a few of my favourite songs for her. What, with you actually singing? Yeah. Tell you what, I'll get your record contract by tomorrow morning. Yeah. Oh, thanks, mate. Means a lot. I knew you could help me with all your celebrity mates and that. Anytime, mate. So when are we doing our song? Now or after the interview? Let's see how much time we've got after the interview, eh? You promise we can do the number? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, of course, mate. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. You're such a good mate. We've got a great show for you this morning. I'll be talking to Linda Sage, who tells us that the lockdown is the longest period of time that she's been out of prison in the past three years. <laughs> Linda Sage, it's wonderful not to have you with us this morning. And it's great not to be with you too. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, um, I think uh, our audience are going to be, they, they don't know anything about, anything about you, but we teased them with this line that um, since the 25th of March, this, during this lockdown, it's the longest that you have been out of prison in three years. It is, yes. So I've tell spent, us, what are you talking, what's the story here? What are you teasing us with here? I've, I've spent a lot, of a lot of my adult life behind bars. One way and another. Oh, what you in, what you been in for? All sorts of reasons. And I've been in all of the most notorious prisons you can think of in the UK. Oh, go on, name, name a few, go on. What, what? Uh, Wormwood Scrubs, uh, Roehampton, uh, obviously Armley. Uh, Canterbury, Holloway, all sorts of prisons. That's a lot of crime. A lot of crime. And a lot of criminals that I've sat across from as well. 
So what are you, what are you actually doing there to go on, spill the beans? Uh, my background is uh, criminal psychology. So uh, I did an awful lot of work with profiling with the police and also within the, the prison environment to do uh, reports and uh, analysing them and all sorts of things like this. So uh, all of the infamous and famous, I have sat with and had a chat with. Gosh, poor rooms. And uh, I suppose like any job where, uh, that you, 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 you are um, involved in, an extreme like that you must build up a picture of what of, of what how people's minds work well that, that's that, that's the whole point of psychology because um, there's lots of different areas of psychology but i particularly work with the cognitive psychology which is on how the brain functions so basically we all have triggers which are exactly the same for everybody and then we have the belief about the triggers. And this is the one that is uh, slightly changeable. And once we have the belief, that causes the emotion, which goes on to a knock-on effect for the behaviour. So if we change the belief, we change the emotion and the behaviour. Right, so you work, you work with um, people on, on the inside. Do they, do they want to work with you? Do they, are you, are you like a welcome, a welcome visitor? Or are you a, a sort of, oh, you know, here we go. Uh, somebody else trying to peer into my mind it depends if uh, what they want uh, prison, most prisoners are very manipulative if they've got a, a hearing coming up or if they're going to court and they want to make it a, a good impression they will work with you or they will give you the answers they think you want to hear uh, which aren't always the right ones um but others well if they've got already got a long sentence some of them it's well what's the point so it's it's, very much, it sounds very familiar, very much like being a teacher, in fact. <laughs> same, there's a lot of similarities. <laughs> same responses from our delegates. Yeah. So um now how can we how how you when we decided to have a chat, how is how how are we relating criminal psychology to how our students are feeling right now? Are they I suppose because they're they're a bit locked up themselves, aren't they? Well, yeah, the, the thing is, most people think of prison as somewhere uh, that we're locked inside of, like the physical prisons. When you, you see them, they're quite daunting and you know, they, they look as if they don't want people to go inside of them. So it's like to put off. But the most prison that everybody lives in is only seven inches big. And that is a prison that is between this year and this year. So the space in here holds more people prisoner than all the prisons in the world. I see. So that makes sense. So your your strap line that you use when you when you work with people, because presumably you work not with the criminals, you're working with people in the public and people in business. And so, uh, I see your strap line is called unlocking you. Yes. So that's because what you mean. They look, all hold ourselves prisoner by the beliefs that we have. Right. And you know, if you think about it, a, a newborn baby comes into the world. It doesn't matter where they are in the world, right? They do not know the color of their skin. They have no fears. They have no phobias. They have no isms. They know no habits, no attitudes. So everything is learned. And if it is learned, it's not always a positive learning. It doesn't always do the best for you. So if you can learn it, it means it can be unlearned and relearn with something more positive and, and helpful for you. Right. So there are, there are, you're saying, are you saying there's beliefs we have that actually we've actually build our own prisons? Exactly. exactly. I mean, if you, if you asked um, different people uh, uh, their favourite football team, they will answer you as they really believe. They don't just pick one out of a hat because they think about it. They, they believe in this. And if they say that, I believe they're really the best. You know, but all football teams have ups and they have downs. There is not one single one that has a 100% performance rate or achievement rate. So the belief is what is different. Because you know, if everybody believed exactly the same, we would only need one football team in the mm. whole world. Think how short the football season would be but like it is now yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we all have we have beliefs what, what happens if we do believe or uh, like your um, criminal friends or we do believe something that 
it's not serving us. It's not true. Um, we've, 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 we've got the wrong, the, our football team's rubbish, but we still believe them to be good or something more serious than that. What can you do about having a belief that isn't serving you? What can we do about it? The, the easiest thing to, all fears and phobias are illogical. Like, let's just take, for instance, um, a spider. You know, people are, are scared of spiders. Now, in Britain, we do not have any poisonous spiders. Right? And just the sheer volume of us to a spider, we are like huge monsters. Right? But yet, people are scared of them because their belief system has been honed to that. You know, perhaps their, their mother or a, an older sibling or somebody they thought was really important when they were younger were scared of, of spiders. So they've already got the belief, well, if they're scared of it, it can't be good for me either. So they've already got that belief growing. And the more it's reinforced, the more it, uh, mm. of a belief it becomes. Because we don't think about it, it gets into the subconscious and then it's there like a habit, a belief. You know, these people that say, oh, I must have two cups of coffee before I can work function in the morning. No, otherwise every single human being would need two cups of coffee to That's function. That's interesting, yeah. So a lot of the excuses we hear from, from our students so is, I can't do this, or I can't do that, or I can only do this, and because I do this, I can't do the other. Um, they're all yeah, beliefs we, as well, aren't they? That are, you, yes, you we're, not we're serving people very well. We're stopping ourselves. You know, as humans, basically, we do not have limits. We only put the limits on ourselves. And our belief in ourselves is the biggest way of stopping ourselves moving forward. You know, when a baby, again, a baby is born, right? There is no omni important person. What, and I'm not talking about religion here. I'm just talking about the baby coming into the world. There is no entity that is stood there and say, oh, I'm going to give you a teaspoon of potential. I'm going to give you two spoons. I'm going to give you a bucket load. Everybody has got far more than they need. But it's just that a lot of times we believe that we're not worthy. We believe that, oh, I can't do that. You know, and one of the famous old sayings is, you know, if you believe or you believe you can't, you're probably right. Mm. Because you're going to act in the way to make that come true. So, so here we are. What can we, how can we do it? How can we... Um... How can we stop letting ourselves down like this? You know, we think we think, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm going to, I'm gonna be better at this, and then we'll we fall back into the old habits and the old ways. How, exactly. how can we do that? How can we break through it? That's the, that's the word. These are habits, right? As I say, we weren't born with them. We we've, we've developed them over time. A habit takes about twenty eight days to actually become a way that we think is is normal, right? Um, very simple thing, you know, cross your arms. Let's just, just try it, just cross your arms. Right. Now it cross them the other way. Just... Yeah. It feels wrong, doesn't it? Right, but there's no right or wrong way to cross your arms. Some people will do it one way, some people will do it another way. So it's a habit. So going back and correcting this, if it's something in your life that you're not feeling good about, you, uh, you're talking to yourself in a negative way, just stop it, think about it, and change it. It's just, it is simple, but it's not easy. Right? And do I have to do that for 28? Do I have to fold my hands the other way or, or, or believe in a different thing for 28 days then? Do I have to do it? You keep you keep it rolling and keep it pushing because you haven't got the habits you've got without working at them. Yeah, they've been really worked into a groove, haven't they? Been worked into it. Yeah. So the the, the thing the thing is like when you're uh, if I, you're talking to yourself, if you talk to a friend like you talk to yourself, do you think you'd have friends for very long? Got a point. You've got a point. <laughs> yeah. so, T taking those negatives and changing them into positives. So if instead of saying, oh, I don't want to be late, I, I don't, you know, I can't do this, change it around the other way. You know, I want to be on time. Uh, I will do, uh, I, will, I will learn to do this. 
So it all opens up great big new horizons because when you're forcing yourself into negatives and saying, oh, I can't do this, it, oh, that's just like me, you're putting off excuses and you're closing down your ability to receive this information. Right? So it's about opening it up and saying, actually, you know, I might not be able to do it. For example, you know, one of the uh, early on, I was working with a lot of young offenders, right? I do not know anything about the inside of a car. Even now, I do not know how to fix a car, right? And these young offenders knew lots about cars because they were stealing cars all the time, right? So we were sitting down and having this conversation and I was saying, but you know a lot more than me about cars. No, 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 but you're, you're educated and you've been to university. So you know, I said, no, but we know a lot about different things. So it's okay not to know something about something you're not interested in. To me, the inside of the car has no interest. I, I am capable of knowing about it if I want to know about it. But if I choose not to know about it, that's fine too. So do you think of a lot of our failures that we that we have, uh, say in, in school, as somebody who's who perhaps not not good at spelling or uh, arithmetic or some other aspect of learning or science or something, that that, that they're actually they've decided not to be good at that. Well, they've been. A how many times have they been told they're not good at that? Especially people that work with dyslexia or high function mm. autism and Asperger's and things like this. You know, it is drummed into them from an, an early age. Oh, you're not good at this. You know, your behavior is bad. You know, and this is in the end what they come to expect of themselves. And it's not that. It's acting out as you believe you are. Because if you don't, your subconscious is then saying, oh, wait a minute, this is wrong. This feels uncomfortable. Just like folding your arms the wrong way. Mm. Right? So uh, distinguishing between the behavior and the person is really important. You know, like for, very simply, you know, I don't like your behavior, but I love you. Mm. Or, and you know, for many teachers, you know, they will explain something to um, their, their class and they will turn around and say, do you understand? And what are they going to say? Mm, no, yeah, yes. you're right. Yeah. Yes. But instead of just asking that question, do you understand? What have you understood? Mm. And all of a sudden, these ones that have concepts at different ways will have the opportunity to actually say, well, I thought about this. And it will make people realize, well, you haven't understood it the same way mm. without them feeling as if they're being made to be different. So just small changes can open up a lot of doors. This gives me an idea, actually, uh, which uh, bolts onto what we were talking about just before we started about. Well, we need a task to do in our tutor group. So when, we've, when, when, when everyone's watched the show, then they'll go into their tutor groups and have a chat. And there's a bit I'd like to, to put to you as, as an idea that we could do. Um, I wonder if people could talk to their tutors and, their, and their, um, their peers. Could they define their prison, define the, the, the bars that are holding them back? You know, the, the limiting beliefs that they've got. Because I could do it for myself. I could do it right now. I'm not going to, but I could do. And I reckon it would be a useful exercise for us all to do, to define what, what is actually stopping us. What are these things that define our prison that we need unlocking from because i think we've got to, we've got to recognize there are bars haven't we before we can remove them yeah and it, and if you actually put the paper and fold it in half and put down one side that you think are, are all your negatives then put on the other side your positives now, everybody struggles trying to write their positives right they're so negative on themselves but literally whatever you write on the negative side just turn it around and make it into positive. Yeah. Yeah, right. The opposite. So that, that's a great exercise to do. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. But you gave us an offer as well. You said, uh, you said that um, you present a, a program, a radio program on East Leeds FM, don't you? Yes, I do several uh, programs for East Leeds FM and we go out uh, online so you can share it out anywhere you like and listen to it anywhere you like. 
But if you would like to do this uh, writing exercise and write, you could write a poem, you could write um, a paragraph about limiting beliefs or prisons, how they're constructed and how you feel perhaps finding a way out of them. What is, well, yeah, so we could get, we could ask our groups to talk, to write a, a, just a piece of prose or a poem or a, a, a song or something about how they're feeling right now during this time. They're all yeah. at home, they can't talk to their mates, they're locked away, they, they can't go out to parties, they can't go to school, they're having to do things on the screen. If we, yeah, if we got some of the emotions out of what that feels like, and then I'll talk to the tutor groups, they can send, they send the pieces to me and I'll pass them on to you, and you can choose, choose, a, choose a few to read out on air. We, yeah, we can do it out on air. And also, if they want to put uh, a choice of song and a dedication, then we can oh, put that yeah, out as well. Oh, that'd be great, well. wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be great. So uh, a little line of a poem uh, or, or some, some, some expression of emotion about how they're feeling with, yeah. a, with, a, with a, a song, a dedication and a song. That would be great. That would be a great, a great challenge. Yeah. We'll do it. We'll do it. Fantastic. Well, uh, Linda, thanks for um for for joining us uh, under these circumstances and, and joining us in our all our individual prisons this this morning <laughs> and uh, it's been a pleasure having you it's always great to have someone who's got a, a unique insight and a, an unusual career path we don't normally we don't normally encounter these type of these types of careers it's great for us all to see the type of jobs that are out there that people do that people do um uh you know not, aren't as obvious as this but this is really interesting so thanks for sharing, uh, really sharing it with us. um and uh what are you up to next do you can you work under these circumstances is there stuff going on oh yes I'm, I'm i'm doing a lot of work obviously uh not within the prison uh service at the moment actually we had a, mi a meeting this morning about that so it's going to be a, probably a while before we get back into prisons but i say i do a lot of work with the radio i do online work i do work one-to-one -one as well so of course zoom has really taken over mm -hmm. and this is one of the areas that i've had to develop because my age group is no techno babe but in the last few weeks i have certainly learned an awful lot because i'm broadcasting from home i have i have two studios now i have a video studio in my lounge and i have a radio studio in the bedroom so <laughs> <that's even laughs> <a> <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. Well, thanks, Linda, for being with us this morning and uh, all the best to you. And uh, we'll hopefully hear from you soon. Or we'll get these, hopefully get some stories and poems and thoughts passed on to you. And we'll hopefully some of them might be read out. That's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all stay safe and well. Thank you very much. I am the dark spirit of the coronavirus, ready to trap the unwary, the show off, the fool. And this is the kind of place where you'd expect to find me. But no one expects to find me here. It seems too ordinary. But the children are close together. They're holding hands. <laughs> the unwary ones are easier still. Touching. Play fighting. Soon they'll have a very different fight on their hands. <laughs> Only a fool would ignore this, but there's one born every minute. It's the perfect place for an infection. The old people don't stand a chance. <laughs> but what's this? Children socially distancing themselves, programming their Commodore VIC-20 computers. Sensible children. I have no power over them. I'll be back, 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 back. What's the matter with you? I didn't get in the choir. You did tell Miss Johnson, didn't you? I forgot. My life is a perfect graveyard of broken dreams. Oh, come on. You think I'm no good, no. don't you? You had your fingers crossed, didn't you? Uh. I could see you in the monitor. Oh look, I'm sorry, mate. Come on, let's work together. We'll get your dream. Do you mean it? Yeah, we'll do. We'll do your song. You. Really? Yeah, you start. I wish I could fly, 
right up in the sky, but I can't. You can? Can't. Everyone laughs and says that I'm daft and I am. You're not. I am. Terry? Yeah? Who is your very best friend? You are. I'm gonna help you mend your My broken, broken heart. heart. Look, kidda, let, let anybody stop you. You follow your dream, you keep singing, and we'll do it together. Really? You sing your heart out. Jesus Christ, superstar, are you who they say you think you are? Jesus Christ, superstar, drives round at night in his Jaguar. Jesus Christ, superstar, he's got a CD player, 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 player,